to create a trading chart in After Effects, I first uh, create uh, a composition. In this case, I'm going to make it uh, 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to add to this composition a solid. It doesn't matter the color, whatever color we do. And then I'm going to apply the effect called right on, which you find under generate. And I drag it and drop it straight onto the layer itself. And then I'm going to change the painting style as uh, on transparent. Uh, by doing so, you'll see that I render only the middle of the screen with whatever is the brush size that I have decided. So if I have a brush size of 47, you see that the edges are by default a little bit uh, blurred. And that's where I changed the brush hardness to 100%. So it's 100% solid. And uh, later on, we will have a look at this other parameter here called uh, brush spacing. So um, the brush position is the one that defines where this one will be moving. So at the moment, I have a composition that is 18 seconds. And let's say I want to start from outside the screen. So I drag this brush position outside, make sure that the current time indicator is set to zero, click on the stopwatch, then move my current time indicator all the way to the end at 18 seconds, and then move the brush stroke pretty much on the other side of the screen. Then it's up to you if you want to make a positive uh, trend or a negative trend in the chart. Let's make it a little bit positive. Now, I reduce the size of the brush, of course. I don't want the chart to be so big. Uh, it's up to you how big you want to make it. I think maybe around nine points, nine pixels would be all right. And what it does so far, it's simply drawing from one side to another. Okay, and it goes at the speed that you define. So if the first keyframe for brush position is all the way to the end at 18 seconds, then it will take 18 seconds to cross the screen. Now, if you select the layer and tap the letter U on the keyboard, it will show you where the keyframe is. So if you move it backward, it will make the animation faster. We can look at it later. Uh, what I want to highlight is that if I make it very fast, you will see that all of a sudden the line become a series of dots and that's because we have this brush spacing set to 0 0.010 so if you click and drag on it and you drag it all the way down to 0 0.001 then it's a line no matter what so there are no spacing in between and i find that that makes the animation look nicer now next what i want to do i want to create a random sequence of ups and downs and so what i'm going to do i'm going to alternate click on the stopwatch of brush position and i'm going to add a wiggle expression so if i had a normal wiggle like um, one and 100 which is frequency one every second 100 is the magnitude 100 pixel you'll notice that it will do movements that are not really uh, what a uh, trading chart will do because it will go backward and it is not supposed to go backward so what we're going to do we're going to transform this wiggle into a variable. And so we can assign any name to the variable. I, in this case, I'm gonna uh, call it my, and then capital Y, simply because Y is the vertical axis that I want to animate. So I say my Y equals to wiggle, and then to bracket one comma 100, and then semicolon. Now that I've declared the variable, I have to place the variable. Now, as you probably know, the variable for a property that has uh, X and Y will require you to set zero and then one, which are uh, X and Y. And I place both of them into square brackets like this. So we are declaring something and something about X, which is zero and one, which is Y. So because I don't want the uh, wiggle expression to apply horizontally, I will just type value for zero and then I will type uh, the name of the variable. So it's my y for one. And there you go. And now it's already doing what we are expecting from a trading chart. Now, I want to highlight that you can make uh, the um, variation uh, higher or lower. So for example, we can make uh, uh, 400 uh, 
uh, pixels maximum, which means that every second, because we say one, once every second, it will pick a random value along the Y, uh, which is going to be plus or minus 400 pixels. Now, if you change the first value, let's say, for example, to 0 0.5, it's going to make that change less often. Instead of once per second, per second, we'll do it uh, once every two seconds. And so you will have uh, less uh, of a roller coaster. But if you increase this number to a higher number, like for example, two, then it will become a crazy transaction pattern. It depends on what type of uh, uh, pattern you want to uh, mimic. If you are doing, for example, a crypto video, maybe you want to have something uh, with more or less volatility is up to you this time. I just want to share uh, what's the technique needed. I'm going to make the uh, path smaller and I'm going to change the color to red. And in the preview that I did before, you'd notice that I've also changed the color. When it goes up is green, when it goes down is red. It's very easy to make that. So in this case, I wanted to start green because it first goes up. And uh, then I will start the stopwatch for color. And then I'll click on the layer and tap the letter U to display the uh, keyframe. And then when it reaches the top there, I will move the green keyframe there and immediately after I'll change the keyframe to red. And you see that the timeline shows me where the change will occur. So when I play back, you will see that it will go up as green, down as red, and then up to you when you want to change it one more time to uh, green. All you need to do is to click this uh, add or remove keyframes at the current time, which in this case, which means it means that we confirm that it's going to be red until that point. And then because I'm lazy, I'll just click on the first keyframe, the green one, and then copy and paste it there. So it goes back to the green. When we uh, play, we got the green, the red, and the green. Again. So uh, all you need to do if you want to repeat the same thing and just to copy and paste the previous set of two keyframes where you want it to change color. And so that it will continue alternating between uh, red and green. But again, you don't need to do this one. You can do it everything without uh, any color at all, as it was at the beginning, it was uh, white. And so you can play it back this way. Um, now, one last thing, if you want to change the uh, amount of variation you see is quite crazy in terms of volatility maybe you want to make it less volatile before and more volatile later what you can do is to go here into your effects and preset pick a slider control and then drag it onto the uh, same uh, layer that we have here in the composition which is the only layer we have used which is this gray solid and then pick that number that we have in the expression this 400 highlight it and then with the pick whip you drag it onto the slider uh, you can also choose to rename the slider uh, control effect to uh, m for magnitude and you'll see that we will reflect the change within the expression uh, reason why i'm doing so is because like now i can say okay at the beginning i want to have very little uh, volatility so i'm going to pick like 30 pixels which means that every one second it will pick plus or minus 30 pixels and then at a point, I'll say, okay, now I want more volatility. So I tap letter U on the keyboard so I can see it in my timeline. And then I say, after one second, I want a crazy volatility. So I say 500 pixels. And you will see a nice spike up or down. And then I bring it back to a lower volatility, which I define as 30. And then I can repeat this one one more time, wherever I want to have a peak, either up or down. And because it's a random, I will recommend that you change the value when you want to experience something completely different. You can say, for example, uh, 650, and then it will uh, re-render something completely different. Alternatively, just delete the keyframe altogether and then manually uh, choose another amount, and then it will run randomly pick another number. In this case, it's going down, but if you do it uh, uh, many times, you will see that it will also go up. So have a uh, or maybe we can also uh, do something like this, like instead of having 30 to uh, 500 and 500 to 30, I add another number in the middle, say I add another uh, 600, and then you see it will spike up. Uh, then I would suggest that you want to make this type of animation 
work with a very long uh, uh, composition. So you have plenty of uh, opportunities to pick the segment that you want and you will always have uh, the sort of effects that we like to achieve. Uh, generally, I, I think that if you have multiple um, yeah, keyframes in between, so this the first one is 30, the last one is 30, and in between I've got a random number, you'll come up with these nice uh, uh, peaks and effects that maybe you want to use to show that there is a peak in the price of the video uh, that you're making on the token. For example, if you're making a, a video for a crypto token and you want to show that there is volatility and overall is going up. And don't forget that we are also chosen to apply a pixel, uh, sorry, a uh, keyframe to the brush position. And this one is the, the first value of the brush position is not controlled by the expression, but is controlled by the keyframe. And so we can de decide that that one will go down instead of going up by simply dragging up and down the last keyframe that we had in our animation. Similarly, we can do the same thing at the beginning. We can say that it starts very low and it goes very high up. Give it a bit of time to render and then you will see that now the projection is nice and smooth with quite a lot of volatility and the overall projection is going up to the moon. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have enjoyed, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.